Driving you home on the big show, we're live until 7 o'clock tonight for a brief moment. This morning, it looks as if this could be a week of two landmark victories for women wanting more equality. The appointment of the first female bishop and the final go-ahead for women in the armed forces to serve on the front line. The Defence Secretary says he hopes a ban on women serving in frontline infantry roles will be lifted in the next year or so. So we're not quite there yet, but some have long argued... But serving alongside the infantry is not the same as serving in the infantry. Well, there's a, a twist uh, for you, John. What's your response to that? And look, I mean, I respect Ashley's uh, service, uh, and I would. But my point is this: what Ashley is saying is that she doesn't want women to fight in the infantry. And my point is, as long as women are capable of fighting in the infantry, it is not for me. It is not for Ashley. It is not for anybody else to tell women what they can do or what they should do. Let's put that as to long Ashley. as they are capable let's, of doing let's it. Let's put that to Ashley. Should women at least have the choice? Well, here. here is is the point that um, I think it's disproportionate the amount of time that's been spent on this. In the world, already got quite a few Facebook uh, comments on our Facebook page. Kieran says, I love the idea of the bridge, but I think it should be in a different place. It's already easy to cross at that point on the river. I also think rather than inventing new attractions, more should be done to protect London's culture. Uh, Brian says it's a poor idea. We need another bridge in East London to alleviate Blackwall tunnel traffic and cycle incidents. Uh, Andrew says £175 million to spend and somebody thinks garden bridge how about youth centers homeless shelters fuel poverty school facilities are they all less important asks andrew what do you think leave your comments on our facebook page you can also tweet me tonight at bbc london 949 you can text me just start your message with the word london at 8133 or give me a call always great to hear from you especially first time callers i don't bite unless you're a politician oh, to oh, so. It's eight minutes past five. Good evening. This is Drive Time on BBC London. A former London teacher who admitted to the possession and making of thousands of indecent images of children has escaped jail today. Anthony Fugel, a former classics master at one of the country's most prestigious schools, has been given a suspended sentence. He taught at Connick Court in Barnes, a feeder school to St Paul's where the Chancellor, George Osborne, was taught. BBC London's Alice Bandakravi has been following the events in court uh, today and joins me now with more details. Good evening to you, Alice. Um, let's just start by just... Uh, uh, let's get some reaction uh, to this now. Um, joining me is Peter Saunders, um, a regular guest on Drive Time. He's the founder and spokesperson from the National Association of People Abused in Childhood. Hello, Peter. Good evening, Chris. Uh, how do you feel about this sentence? Oh, God, it's always such a depressing subject that I have to talk about, isn't it? Um... But it's important I, that you do. It, it, it is. And so, Chris, so many survivors of these dreadful, dreadful crimes are, are coming forward. So many. And, and when these crimes are exposed and when the perpetrators are apprehended, abused, why didn't he seek help a long time ago? Well, he should have done that. And I have very little sympathy, I have to say, Chris. Yeah. I mean, th that brings me to my next point. Uh, yeah. He did clearly want help for his urges. He is remorseful of his actions he's going to get after help. he was arrested <laughs> he's going to get after he was arrested he's going to get help he's going to be monitored yes. and yes. you know thankfully parents can sleep well tonight knowing that you know he's not going to be looking at those images again he's been caught he's in the spotlight we're talking sure. about him now sure. um sure. so one has to question did a custodial sentence ha you know was it needed in this actual case he, he, as the judge quite rightly said you have been punished you you're, you're named you're shamed you have to seek help. You must mm. get that help. We'll be monitoring you. And this is a suspended sentence. They're going to be it watching is. his every move. It is. And I think it's absolutely... Crazy. And he's got away with it. And, and I'm pretty sure that the rest of London is thinking, how do you get away with that? How do you well, really get away with it? Well, Kevin, he didn't get away with it. He'll be watched. He'll be monitored. Uh, he won't be allowed to work with children. And a judge has got to sit there and take everything into account. Is this man a danger to children? Uh, can he be safely returned to the community? Can he be corrected? And is a custodial sentence in the best interests of everyone? So your your opinion is your opinion. I'm not saying it's yeah, not valid, I, I, um, I, but but I, I you know you are suggesting I, the judge made the decision that he made because he's from a privileged background. Well, I, I don't I don't think it's you know I'm pre I'm pretty much sure that if that was me in the same position.